how's it going? This is Justin with Lesser Dog Tutorials, and this is the first video in the retro first person shooter tutorial series. We have a lot to go through. I'm really excited to get into it. There's a lot of things to learn, a lot of things to do. So let's get started. What I'm going to do first is create a blank Unreal Engine 5 project, and I'm making sure it's blank and it's C. And that's really all, so I'm going to create that now. So to kick things off, I'm going to create some folders. And the first one will be Retro FPS. That'll be the, the main folder, the content. And then in here, I'll create some folders. And let's just do Blueprints. Oh boy, if I can spell. And then another folder. Materials and another one. Levels and another one. Textures. And in textures, I'll create another folder in here called Weapons. And then another one called Levels. All right, and then we're going to create a new level that will be blank. We can save this. In our levels folder. We'll just call this test map. And then while we're at it, we'll just go to project settings. If you search for map, you can see the, the editor startup map, and we'll just do test. We'll do that for the default also. So in the um, description of the video, you'll see a link to some level textures that will be we'll be using. So I'm just going to import all of the walls into my um, textures folder here. And then I'll just import that. And now I have all of the wall assets that we can use. And then I'm just going to do sprite actions and apply paper 2D settings so that they're crisp and clear. Now I'm going to just select kind of a material I don't plan on using. So probably 133. And I'm going to right click it and create a material. And I'm going to call this M underscore FPS material. And I'll just move this over to the materials folder. And this is going to be kind of the base material that I'm going to base everything else off of. So, and so what I'll do first is I will you know, hold one and add a parameter of um, a float parameter, and I'll keep it at zero, and I'll just move that into the specular section because I don't want it to be reflective at all. And then for the UVs, what I want to bring in is texture coordinate, and then I'm going to multiply this by 0.5, so it should make it a little larger. Yeah. And then, lastly, I want to make the texture a parameter. So I'll right click and convert to parameter, and I'll just call it texture. And that's really all we need to do, because we want to be able to make instances of this and replace this texture um, parameter with whatever texture we want. So if I were to create a material instance from this, I can name this M underscore floor, and then open that up and override the texture up on the, the right side here. And I think the first one, tile 000, is a good floor, so I'll just use that. And then I could actually make another one that I'll call M underscore wall. And I'll override that texture. Then I'll use something that looks good for a wall, and I think I'll choose tile 065. And then if I go to the um, geometry section, I can drag in a box and try to bring it up to sit on top of the world here. And I'll zero out its location, and then I'll apply a wall to it. And you can't see anything, and that's because we don't really have any lights, so I'm just applying this texture to each side. And let's add some lights so we can see a little better. So I'll drag in a um, directional light. 
and right now it's only lighting up the top so let's go ahead and move that to the zero location and change the rotation on the Y to negative 90 and now it's shining straight down and so we can copy and paste that and then change the rotation on the Y to just 90 and that should be lighting it from underneath which it is and we can apply that material there not important but easy to see that it's working so then we will duplicate this so do copy and paste and then we'll remove that rotation on the Y and we'll just leave it as is because it will be high, it will be lighting up one of the sides so then copy and paste and switch to the rotation and we're just going to rotate it 90 degrees I'm going to go left I'll do it again copy and paste this one and rotate that one 90 degrees left and then one more which should now light every side and I'm doing this because I want to create a base light level throughout the map so that the shadows aren't completely dark but they are dimmer than areas that are lit up so if you select all of the lights we can go to the cast shadows check mark and turn that off so that it doesn't affect any sort of shadows or, or anything like that and then we will change the intensity to something low like two or even one now there is going to still be issues we need to go to the project settings we can actually change some things on the rendering tab over here and we'll turn off bloom we'll turn off ambient occlusion we'll turn off auto exposure and we'll turn off motion blur and while we're in the settings we can just search for anti-aliasing and change this to none and this is just to make the game look a lot more retro and when those things are done we want to add a volume a post-production or sorry post-process volume and with that in the world we'll zero out its location and then we'll search in the details for in infinite extent unbound meaning it will affect everything in the level it doesn't have to be encompassing the things that it affects and then we will look for brightness in the exposure under the exposure area there's min brightness and max brightness we want to set these both to one and when that is done now we have kind of a darker look and the light doesn't change when you're like looking around at it we could even make honestly these lights a little dimmer so I think it's the intensity we can change it to maybe 0.5 yeah that looks a little better all right cool so now we can actually start creating the first room that the character will be in all right so I think what I'll do first is grab all these lights put them in a folder I'll just call this default lights I'll minimize that so it's a little easier to see and then I think we'll start adding some geometry in here so the first one will be this cube or box and what we'll do is change the scale on the X and Y to 12 each and then on Z it'll be 0.1 and then I'm just going to move this to 0 on the X 0 on the Y and negative 10 on the Z and now if I select the top of this geometry you can change the UV scale to be 1 by 1 because we don't want it to be 12 by 12 we want it to be 1 for 1 and then we can drag that floor on there and now we have kind of a floor texture it doesn't look amazing but it is the scale that we're looking for and if we drag in another box we can make this the wall by dragging the wall texture on each side and then we can move this around so we'll switch over to the translate and if we switch it from perspective to top it makes it a little easier to see where this stuff should go so then we can copy and paste and start creating the perimeter of our room so I will go ahead and just keep copying and pasting each of these until we have it all set up so now we have one side of the room 
ready to go, and we will add this to a folder, and we'll call this wall one. And then if you right click, you can actually duplicate the hierarchy, and it moves it offset just by one on each side, but we can just snap that back in. And we'll just drag this to the other side here. And again, we can duplicate the hierarchy and rotate it. Select like the rotation tool and we'll just rotate it 90 degrees and then translate it into position like this. We can leave the corners empty because you won't see those. And then one more duplicate hierarchy and we'll just move this on over to the other side. All right, so if we switch back to perspective, you'll see that we have kind of a room um, laid out. We just don't have a ceiling, so we can actually grab this box brush, copy and paste, and just move it up. And I think the, the position is 210 is what we're looking for. And again, you can select the face that's facing down and switch the UV scale to one, and then grab that floor and apply. And so now we have kind of a simple little retro FPS room. And if we were to play, you know, we, we don't really have a character yet, but you can kind of see how it would look in the actual game. And we could even probably make this darker. So let's see what happens if we did make the lights just a bit darker. So remember, grab all of the directional lights. And then we change the intensity to 0.25. Yeah, I think that's a little better. It's um, dark enough that it's a little hard to see, but not so dark that, th that it's impossible to see. All right. Now let's create a character. OK, so I think what we'll do first is pull in that player start, just so that the player has somewhere to go. And then we'll create some blueprints. So the first one I want to create I'll select blueprint class, and then I'll select character. And I'll call this one BP um, FPS player. Uh, should be fine. And then I'm going to create another blueprint class, and this will be a game mode base. And I'll just say this is BP underscore FPS game mode. And if I open up the game mode, I can just add in the um, default pawn class as our FPS player. Compile and save that. And then I'll go to the project settings and we'll just search for mode. And so for the default game mode, we'll just select our FPS game mode. And so now our um, FPS player is the default pawn class and that's what we want. And then since we're in project settings, let's go to input on the left side. And we're going to add some axis mappings. So I think we need four total. Oops, not that. I'm going to hit the plus up here. So one, two, three, four. Top one will be called vertical movement. The next one will be called horizontal movement. And then the next one will be mouse look horizontal. And then mouse look vertical. And so for the input, we do actually want two on the top and two on the second. And then for the first one, for vertical movement, this will be forward and back, so we're looking for the W key and the S key. And then the W key is going to be positive 1 and the S will be negative 1, so it's the inverse of what W is. For horizontal movement, we want A and D. So A, D. And A is going to be negative 1 and then D will be positive. For mouse look, we want mouse X. So mouse look horizontal is mouse X. And then mouse look vertical 
is mouse y, but we are inversing the scale to be negative 1. So that should be all we need for movement, and so the only other thing we need to do is to implement it on the player. So if you open the player, we can go to the event graph, and we can just remove everything here. And then we're going to right click and search for input axis. So we got our axis events that we just added. So we'll add in the horizontal and vertical movement, which is here. And really, these are just going to add movement input um, for our pawn. And we can copy and paste this because we'll be doing this for both of these. So the axis value is going to be equal to the scale value here. And so now we just need to decide what the direction is going to be. So really all we need to do is get control rotation for the pawn. And then we can split this struct here. Because all we really need to do is make a rotator using Z. And then when that's done, we can do get right vector for the top and get forward vector for this vertical movement here. And then these will be plugged directly into this. So this section here is the movement section. So next we just need to determine how the character will look around using the mouse input. So if we just add the mouse look horizontal event and the mouse look vertical event, um, the only thing we really need to do for this is just add a controller yaw input. And that's going to be for the horizontal. But for this vertical one, we want to add a controller pitch input. And really, that should be all we need to do for mouse look. So if you save um, and compile this, we can head over to the viewport of this player because we just want to tweak a couple things. We want to add a camera. So let's go ahead and add that. And then we will move this camera to 40 on the Z. See what that looks like. I think that's probably a good level for the head. And then I want to set the movement walk speed to 800, not 600. Now let's see how that works. Okay, so this is where like the level is good, but the mouse movement only goes left and right. And that is like a retro game, but I think I want to update it so that we can look up and down. So really all that you need to do is select the camera and we'll search for pawn control rotation. So with that done, now everything should be working and you can look up and down and you can just walk around the level. You won't go through walls and everything looks good. So now the next thing that we would want to do is add some sort of weapon um, to the player. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned a bit. I know this was just kind of basic stuff, but we will be moving into some pretty complicated things coming up. And the next step is adding that weapon. So if you like the video, please hit like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.